Hi guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist and a diabetes specialist for those who do not know me yet. Now today we are going to talk about Thanksgiving dinner. Now this video is more for me than for you because I am getting four days off and I don't want you to guys keep calling me for 500 blood sugars. Let's get started. So in today's video, I am going to talk to you about how much carbs you are getting in the Thanksgiving dinner, but also I will tell you how to keep your blood sugar down, and I'm going to tell you how many times you need to check your blood sugar and how to adjust your medications accordingly to make sure that you can survive that Thanksgiving day. I don't want anybody to go into coma this Thanksgiving season. I'm going to give you tips and tricks about how to eat right, and also, I'm not going to tell you just don't eat this, don't eat that. I'm not that kind of doctor. I am the doctor who will tell you exactly how to keep your blood sugar under control and still enjoy your life. Keto guys are out. Don't even listen to this. All right, so let's talk about how to have the moderation in your Thanksgiving dinner. You will have Thanksgiving dinner. Don't lie to me. You're going to have the green bean casserole, sweet potato casserole, mashed potatoes, Mac and cheese, baked rolls, pumpkin pie, all of that. I know you're going to have it. Don't lie to me. So, let's see what we can do about this. And we can keep your sugar still under control. Let's talk about the green bean casserole. So when you're making your plate, let's pay attention to a couple things so we can still stay under control. Now, I will also talk about the medications, what you can do to adjust your medications to prevent blood sugar spikes because you're going to have more than usual carbs so what do you do about that right if you keep taking the same medication so you know they're not going to work and i don't want you to make mistakes to cause like extremely low or extremely high blood sugars after that thanksgiving dinner so let's talk about the plate first and i'll tell you how to adjust your insulin or oral medication or injectable whatever you're taking we'll talk about that so Green bean casserole has around 12 grams of carbs and that's around half a cup. So pay attention to that. Half a cup of green bean casserole. So what is a half a cup of uh, green bean, right? How do you imagine it? You're not going to have like a measuring cup and try to put it in your... That people will laugh at you. So what is that? So I would imagine like a tennis ball will be your half a cup. Just imagine a tennis ball and imagine that that's how much green bean casserole you can have. And that's actually um, one serving and that's around 12 grams of carbs. So keep that in mind when you're adding more carbs to your plate. Now, what else? What role, I would say, sweet potato casserole play? The casserole... <laughs> sweet potato casserole is around 49 grams of carbs per one cup. So what is that one cup? One cup is baseball. You've seen that before, right? A baseball. A baseball is your one cup. If you don't want to have 49 grams of carbs, just go with the tennis ball, which is half a cup. So then you can make the calculation, okay, if you get the whole sweet potato casserole, then that's going to give you around 50 grams of carbs per baseball. All right, also, I would suggest take the marshmallow off the table, off your plate. That will help you as well. Mac and cheese. Now, mac and cheese is around 45 grams of carbs per one cup. Again, one cup is your baseball. Half a cup, you want to go with the half of that? Recommend it, highly recommend it. Then you can have around 20, 22 grams of carbs. Now, remember, you are going to get full. So, you don't have to really load your uh, plate too much. Start with half a cup of everything. Uh, or even less than that. And if you don't really feel like eating that, then maybe go with what do you really want to eat. And then you will realize that what you have in your plate still fills you. So you don't really have to, you know, stack up and get a big plate. You can always go for later if you think, but more than likely you will not. So, mashed potato. Mashed potato is around 35 grams of carbs. That is for one cup. So you figured the rest, you already know what that one cup is by now. So the bread stuffing is around 22 grams of carbs per one ounce. Now, 
what is one ounce? How do you know really one ounce, right? So the one ounce is if you make a little uh, cup of your hand and just in the middle of the, the cupped hand is around one ounce of that bread stuffing. So then you can think, you know, that's what you're getting for that bread stuffing. And then finally, baked rolls. Duh, after all those carbs, if you are still having baked rolls, that means that you really have a serious problem. You, should, you really need to see me. Uh, I don't think you should have that, but if you wanna have that, if you're gonna prefer that over something else, let's say you wanna have a baked roll, but instead of a sweet potato casserole, go for it. Oh now, now you're looking for dessert, you're itching for dessert, and now it's time for pumpkin pie. Everybody's eating, you're staring, should I have it, should I not have it? I know you will have it, but let's see how much you're gonna get. 46 grams of carbs per slice. So if you are thinking about pumpkin pie already before the dinner, maybe you should save some room and have your carbs on the low side so you can have some pumpkin pie later. Apple pie. Okay, so let's say your mom decided to go with the apple pie this year, then you're stuck with the apple pie instead of a pumpkin pie. Then you're gonna go with the 44 grams of uh, carbs for that. Again, one slice is around 44 grams of carbs. So now, the biggest suggestion is, of course, the portion size. As we discussed about how much carbs you are getting, as a diabetic, you shouldn't be having more than 30 to 60 grams of carbs, depending on your age, gender, da 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 da, da. Now, this is a Thanksgiving day. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be giving to you guys. You eat all. I'm, I'm just kidding. Not, well, hey, let's do this. Let's, let's negotiate. I am going to give you... 100 grams of carbs, what do you think about that? 100 grams of carbs, but, but you gotta listen to me, don't, don't, don't just shut the video yet, we're not done yet. You cannot just eat 100 grams of carbs and just get out of the room. You can, I'm gonna tell you how to eat 100 grams of carbs and can still keep your blood sugar in control. Now, let's make one thing clear. You're not having more than 100 grams of carbs. That's all our carbs. You have the turkey, you have a lot of other things you can eat, so don't pile on the carbs. Now, now, let's say you have diabetes and you are on uh, certain medications. Now, one thing you can do, if you are taking a GLP-1 agonist, which is Ozempic, Trulicity, Bidrian, Bieta, any of these, or Victoza, Rebelsis, if you're on these drugs, and I know most of you are, to be honest with you, and that's totally off-label, but I don't think there's any harm taking an extra shot, doubling your dose for that, like, say, a day before. You know what's going to happen? You're not going to be able to eat whatever you want. You are going to feel full so much. If you're already on these drugs, doubling your dose is not going to make you vomiting, if, even if you had side effects in the beginning. Uh, but now you're used to that drug, you're not having early side effects, so let's say you're taking 0.5 milligram of Ozempic, then you can go give another 0.5 milligram an extra shot, then your appetite is gonna go down, you're gonna, you know, your stomach is not gonna take as much food. Same thing if you're taking Rubel, so seven milligram, you can take 14 milligrams. Now, I cannot really tell you overdose yourself, but I can tell you take a little bit extra uh, on that medication and I don't think that will be harmful just for um, one time and especially you can do that if you are not already having side effects but if you are having side effects already if you're having already nausea and stuff doubling your dose can make you vomit and can dehydrate you so don't do that but if you're already stable nothing's going on you have no side effects you can take an extra dose of that medication that's not going to cause an overdose what else can you do if you are on insulin, there are two types of insulin, long-acting insulin and short-acting insulin. Now, for long-acting insulin, you should not be increasing your long-acting insulin because that long-acting insulin is not designed to prevent blood sugar spike. On the other hand, the short-acting insulin, such as your Novolog, Hemolog, Fiasp, uh, Apidra, uh, Adnolog, these type of drugs, uh, can prevent blood sugar spikes. So I would say, let's say you're normally eating 50 grams of carbs per meal and your blood sugars are well controlled by taking 10 units of Novolog. Let's say that's you. And you can think about that and you can always consult with your doctor as well to make sure that what you're coming up with is correct before the Thanksgiving. Um, and you can always ask, what I'm saying is you always run by your doctor, make sure you get, get there okay because everything I'm saying here is based on 
my personal experience and what I would advise to my patients. But that doesn't mean that you are my patient, so we don't have a relationship. So I would still suggest that as a person, you can make sure that ask your doctor, hey, hey doc, can I do that? I heard that can be done. Is this okay for me? Okay. So anyways, back to the topic. Uh, if you're taking 10 units of no Novolog and that's for, okay for you for 50 grams of carbs on average, in, if you're having 100 grams of carbs, it makes sense for you to take 20 units of insulin, right? Because you're having twice the carbs. So that's one way to do it. For short-acting insulin, that works if you're doubling your carbs. Now, what else can you do? If you are taking glupazide or glyburide, anything like that, um, another way to do that is doubling your glupazide or glyburide or glimepiride for that Thanksgiving dinner. Let's say you're taking glimepiride or glyburide before the dinner. You can take twice more if you are eating twice more. Again, that makes sense. That is, that's not true for every medication, but uh, the one thing you have to make sure that you monitor more often because although we are assuming that you're eating twice more and you're taking twice more medication, medications do not always work like that. Like you double the medication, the, the effect may not double always, or you may um, end up taking the medication, but you may not actually eat as much as you thought you would eat. So as a result, I would suggest on the Thanksgiving dinner, after the Thanksgiving dinner, before bedtime, uh, check your blood sugar, make sure that it's not too high or too low. And if you are still experiencing problems, then you can consult with your doctor to make sure that you don't have a significant problem. Now, um, the uh, third thing you can do, I would suggest drinking some non-caloric beverages before and during your dinner that also prevents you from overeating. So there's two ways to do this. Either you can control yourself from overeating uh, by adjusting your medication, such as increasing your ozempic, uh, trulicity, uh, binary and rubelsis, victosa, etc. Uh, that will help you eat less, but also you can uh, drink more non-caloric beverages which will fill you up. You can also have more salads, etc. Uh, in your dinner, which will fill you up if you do not want to mess with your medications. All right, guys, I hope that video was helpful. Um, now, I know you want to ask personal questions. Uh, the problem with that is if I don't know your history in full, I may not give you personal advice, and that may be risky for you as well. I'm just giving you general inspirational ideas here, and make sure you run your... Um, plan by your doctor before you apply it um, and I'll, apply, I'll answer to your questions as long as it's a general question and you do not ask specific medical advice for yourself on YouTube. If you like it, please subscribe. Make sure you subscribe, give a thumbs up and happy Thanksgiving everybody.